What is happening guys? Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we got kind of a fun video. This year I'm determined to not just do back to back to back reviews. I'm going to make additional content that I care about and today we're going to play a little game of pretend. Now this little fun game of pretend or this idea I guess came to me from two avenues of inspiration. The first is based on a question that I seem to get asked all the time all the freaking time. If I had to make a choice to use one product, what would it be? This question really drives me nuts if I'm being honest. I don't understand really what is so hard about getting that I just don't have a favorite product. I don't have one that I would use all the time, especially if I was stranded on a desert island somewhere. I keep getting asked that. Anyway, I was also recently asked a question that kind of sat into my brain. It was similar to the desert island question, but then later popped back up in my brain after I was listening to a podcast. The original question was, what if there was some kind of catastrophic event and I had to put together a kind of styling go bag of sorts? If I had to put together a bag and just go, what would I put in that bag as far as styling products go? When I first heard this, I obviously laughed because once again, hair product would never end up in my bag if I actually did have to leave for some catastrophic apocalyptic event. But for the sake of a fun episode that isn't a product review, I decided I'd give it some thought. Now, the other source of information that kind of brought me here as well was actually listening to a real podcast that was shown to me recently called The Big One. It's about a very real earthquake that is believed to inevitably hit Southern California. It's actually very interesting, and naturally, these podcasts have nothing to do with hair products. They actually give out real information. They cover life-saving information, survival skills, you know, all the stuff that you actually need in cases like this. So here I am just just sitting here listening, working, you know, doing a regular day when all of a sudden the dots start to begin to connect themselves. Hey, wait a minute. What about that apocalyptic question? I'm listening to some survival skill stuff. I just got asked what I would do styling wise in that area. Now, again, I wouldn't do anything, but what if I played along a little bit? You know, the dots started to fly and I kind of got this idea. What if we played along with this for a little bit? Would it be fun? Who knows? But today we're going to go with it and I'll be sharing with you my product go bag for styling survival. Now, besides the obvious tongue in cheek nature of this video, we're also going to have to suspend disbelief on one major thing. The fact that you'd run out of product. I mean, really, that's why I said this question was so ridiculous to begin with. I mean, if I'm stranded on a desert island or attempting to survive and protect my family in the apocalypse, chances are I'm making space in my bag for everything but hair products. Products. But I said I'd play along. So what I've done here is I've listed a few categories. That was the only way I could do this. I mean, you know how I love a million things. Making me choose one thing is it's just pretty much nerve wracking. It's like saying I'm only gonna use one iPhone for the rest of my life and I know there's another one coming in the fall. It's just, it's terrible. It's just completely nerve wracking. But I did say I'd play along. So here's what I got. My bag here, you know, my generic backpack that would probably serve me no good in a survival situation. I got it right here. And what I got inside is the products that I'm pretending to show you for surviving the apocalypse in style. You like that? I sure do. Let's see what we got in here. First up here, we got shampoo. And what I chose was the pure set from the salon guy. I chose this one basically because, well, it cleans really well. It has a bunch of hair benefits and I can count on it to remove whatever is deep into my hair. I started thinking about all the things that probably this could clean out of your hair, you know, dirt, bugs, vegetation. It's just everything. This will pull it out too easy. There we go for shampoo, we're all set. Next up though, in the bag here, let me see. Here we go, next up is the conditioning oil from Arcadian. And this was actually a pretty logical choice because this product covers hair, scalp, beard, hands, whatever you need to put it on. I'm thinking to myself, this is very important if we're going to be well-groomed apocalyptic people. I mean, you wanna keep your hands and your skin, your be beard, everything all nourished. You have zero time for dry hands in the apocalypse, take it from me. Zero Zero time, this will cover all of it. Now though, let's get into the hard part. That's styling products. And I'm gonna start this one off with some pre-stylers. Let me see what I grabbed here. Also, real quick, I couldn't for the life of me decide which route I wanted to take you on, you know, blow dryer or non-blow dryer. I was thinking the logical route would be no blow dryer since, you know, the whole you know, not living in comfort type thing. But then again, we are suspending disbelief regarding survival skills and the fact that hair products eventually run out should probably 
be part of that. There's arguments both ways. So I decided I would go ahead and just entertain both. For our blow drying option, I decided to just roll with a classic and that's original by Blue Monica. It's just a great and reliable pre-styler or post-styler if you choose for that day. You wanna give yourself some options in the post-apocalyptic world, of course. You definitely wanna have those options. And from what I've seen, it works for a lot of different hair types. So you can offer it to people who agree to join your post-apocalyptic gang. If we're going the non-blow drying route, meaning you just air dry which is an option I guess if you don't care about post-apocalyptic volume you can go with another product here gold digger by Valane this has great hold as well it works on damp or towel dried hair better in my opinion with a blow dryer of course but you know in this time we can't be choosy I don't imagine we'll be able to have that luxury. We can have hair products, but we can't have the luxury of being choosy as far as a blow dryer goes anyway, but this is still a great product. It also works in different hair types, different hair lengths. So this was an easy choice. Love this stuff right here. Now though, let's get into clays. This was super hard. I love so many clays. You guys know that I love me some clays. I had to really just sit here and tell myself that this wasn't a hundred percent serious so that I could just force myself to just choose one. But let me just see what I got here in this Mary Poppins bag of mine. Here we go. Cavalier and Morse Motley. I chose Cavalier for its great hold. You guys know I love the hold on this stuff and Morse Motley for its obvious styling benefits and major potential for trade and apocalyptic gang relations. I mean, really, I do not know a better way to get to know a rival gang than to invite them over for some soup and styling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just keep going. This is getting uh, kind of ridiculous. Last category though, we got pomades. And of course I chose one oil base and one water base. I didn't want to go, you know, all the way out to matte paste, waxes, creams, putties. I didn't want to go through all the different categories, gel types. Cause one, I didn't want to draw this out any further. And two, I might need to outrun somebody here and I don't want that kind of weight in my bag. I mean, we gotta be somewhat practical about this stuff, right? But what I chose here for the oil base option, I went with a classic, Goon Grease. I mean, this is pretty much a giveaway here. I don't even need to explain a product like Goon Grease and why it would work well in this scenario. It would survive the elements. It has multiple purposes. Find some joints maybe, seal up a wound. I imagine you could probably use it as a candle if you really needed to. It is the classic all-purpose pomade. For water base though, let me grab that one out of here. This one was tough because I literally again have 150, 200 pomades over there, but in my bag, I got first-hand supply. This isn't the new packaging, obviously. I'm super stoked to see what that looks like in person. I love the photos I've seen so far. They haven't actually sent that out yet, but as soon as I do, I'll be giving you guys an update in a video on that as well. But I wanted to choose something outside the brands that I've already chose here already, and maybe something outside of the brands that I chose for my most used video for 2018. And this is just really some awesome stuff. You guys already know this stuff rocks. I'm so happy to be hypothetically using this as I now navigate the wastelands of the world in high fashion with a great hairstyle thanks to First Hand Supply. Let's go through some honorable mentions here. I thought it would be fun to just put together a little speed round of stuff that I'd sneak into my bag because I just couldn't leave it behind. First up here we got the Sidekick Spray, definitely can't leave that, and we got the Bivalene Blow, both for high volume and distracting enemies for a dramatic getaway. We also got this slanted safety razor from the Holy Black because even in the apocalypse a neckbeard just sucks. Of course. I'm bringing my favorite comb and I'm actually bringing a couple spares too just in case one breaks or someone steals one you know you can't be without your favorite comb and lastly because I'm not a complete animal I'll add in here the 1821 man-made body wash so I can still smell good even when the world is ending and that my friends is my go bag for styling survival. Once again, this was meant to be fun and not super serious. I do not claim anything that I chose here as a favorite or better than anything else. This was just meant to be some fun and I don't like to get tied down with things in that way. Like I also said too, if I really had to go and make a survival kit, the last thing I'd be concerned about is hair product. And actually that podcast I mentioned was very interesting to listen to on that subject. It really just took me back to my time in the army and some of the stuff that we discussed in training about survival. And if any of you guys want to check that out or you're a fan of podcasts like I am and just looking for a new interesting one, I will throw it in the 
the description there for you guys. Either way, if you enjoyed this video, shoot me a thumbs up and actually let me know in the comment section what would be in your survival style go bag. What, what stuff would you guys bring with you? Let me know there. I'd love to read all about that. That is it for today, though. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here today. I'll be back with you guys again very soon. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.